save lives. That's enough, even at the risk of losing many more. No, and that's the risk we have to weigh up, but I am not one to say uh, we just give up. And for me to, to say that is to uh, acknowledge we shouldn't have intervened at Sarajevo or Rwanda or anywhere else. The question is, can we make a difference? And I think we should try to make a difference. Ivan in Upway, good morning and welcome to The Wrap. Oh, hi, John. Yeah, I just wanted to ask you why you think it is the journalists in this country are so weak and insipid in their analysis of Islam generally. I mean, everywhere you look, Egypt, Tunisia, Libya, Yemen, Syria, Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Sudan, Ethiopia, now in Nigeria, it's just the same old story of death and destruction, misogyny, corruption. Don't you think it's about time Islam was analysed and surely it declares to be, it deserves to be declared a dysfunctional ideology? But Ivan, this is exactly the same uh, sort of stereotyping you're engaging in that has gone on in Bendigo this week. The evidence We're... is overwhelming across the whole world, not just Bendigo. Well, the evidence... We shouldn't be encouraging no, it here. I'm sorry, the evidence of Islam across the world is that there are billions of Muslims. Billions. Billions. There's more Christians than Muslims. Um, I'm not, not, I don't think that's, I don't I don't think that's right. I'm not sure that's true, actually. Uh, but, but it's not a... It's actually... It's not about whether there's more Christians or Muslims. More, the, 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 the question... More, no, hang on, let, me, let me finish, Ivan. There's not more... There are not more Hindus. Uh, the, it's about... It's about uh, slurring an entire... Would you like all of... Every Christian in the world to be slurred by what's been revealed at the Royal Commission? Uh, We're not talking about slurs. A tree is known by the fruit it bears. Uh, the fruit of Islam is so well known but everyone wants to shy away from it. You know what, Ivan? That is exactly the kind of stereotyping and prejudice. Well, and, you, and, you and people at the ABC and in the journalist profession, you've put the god of multiculturalism on a pillar so high, you've lost track of reality. I, I, I just can't even... I don't know how to respond to your sort of sweeping generalisations except to say that it's that kind of, 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 of putting all of Islam into one... Uh, I they mean, I think Al-Qaeda, to me... They has... put themselves into it. I mean, just look at what they do. Yeah, I, what I look That's at... What it, what, and what I, look at, over over what I look at is it's millions over. of Muslims every day all over the world getting on with their lives uh, and, and, and worrying and being concerned about exactly the same kind of things that everyone else well, is. Why aren't all these peaceful Muslims getting in and sorting out all this extremist... I mean, because I think most Muslim, Muslim, they are, right? most Muslims are actually as far removed from what you're talking about as any other person no, is. No, they're just taking Islam seriously. These guys we call extremists, they're taking Islam seriously. Yeah. Ivan, there is, a, there is a really interesting discussion, which we haven't had for a while, but we have in the past. There's a really interesting discussion about why... Uh, Islam is, in some of its observances and in some of its interpretations, in extreme parts of its, of its global reach, a religion that has so many problems in countries that themselves have problems. But, you know, there are countries wrecked with violence that are Buddhist. There are countries wrecked with violence that are Christian. There are countries but wrecked with violence really that are all really sorts of different... Sort of scale. Well, no, and there's lots of pockets of Islam that are causing problems on a global scale, and there's huge areas of the Islamic world that live in absolute peace, harmony and tranquility with well, everybody around true. them. There's some areas... It's not, it, it is true, I think. There's some, there's some areas so far, thank goodness... Well, Indonesia's sending, I think, the highest number of these jihadis over to join up with the Sunni militias. Yeah. But, and, you know... Well, it's like the Crusades, isn't it, for them? That's how they see it. Well, they make it very clear. So they're out there... The worldwide caliphate. I've been there at 200 and, what, 40 million Muslims in Indonesia? And, uh, I mean, I, I just can't... I, I can't get over this kind of uh, stereotyping. That what's going on in, in Bendigo? There was a really interesting piece in the Ballarat Courier, I think it was yesterday or, or even this morning, about, um, uh, you know, about the, the Ballarat Mosque has opened at the same time as all this brouhaha over the Bendigo one has gone on. And, uh, in fact, it looks like it's uh, all worked out pretty well in Ballarat and they were commending the councillors of their sister stereotype you've got 
you know, you've got you've got to, just to, to talk about Bendigo for a moment. You've got a, a city that's got a, a low lower socioeconomic demographic. It's got industries, manufacturing closing down. It's got a lower multicultural um, uh, numbers than the rest of Australia, and yet it's trying to sell itself as an urbane, um, you know, regional city of Australia. Now you can't you can't have it both ways. John, 